Well, good morning, everyone. It's so good to be with you today. And to our bishop, wow, it's so good to see you. And we can't wait to see you in the flesh. And we know that what God is doing in your life, you will indeed come back stronger and better. We're believing and standing with you for an acceleration, amen, of healing in your life. We're so grateful for our bishop. We honor our bishop, but also Pastor Tammy. Pastor Tammy, you are off the chain. You're a blessing to our lives, and so we honor you this morning. And to the Campbells, we honor you, Pastor Harvey and Pastor Leslie. We love you. What a blessing you are to the body of Christ in this time. And to those who are joining us for their first time, I want to greet you in the peace and love and joy of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, wherever you are around the world. And I encourage you this morning to prepare your heart for the word of God. And listen to me clearly. Let's let the word of God work in our hearts today. Even as Bishop just said that the word of God is like a medicine to us. And so we want the presence of the Holy Spirit to meet us right where we are, right where you are in your home. Or maybe you're sitting in a car because you had to get away from the kids. We just welcome you and greet you today, and the Holy Spirit is going to meet you today. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, and God, we offer you our lives. We offer you this moment in time, and God, we pray that you would meet us right where we are. Father, your people that you have saved have come to worship you, and today we honor you, we honor your word, and we give you permission to speak to us and to have your way in our lives. Come on, if you believe that, won't you say amen, amen, amen. If you would uh, turn with me to Matthew chapter 3, I have a word today prepared for you that I believe is a timely word. It's a word that will speak to the season of your life, but also help you in the next, as you journey forward into the purposes and plan of God for your life. Matthew chapter 3, we're going to look at verse 13, and we're going to read through verse 17. And I'm reading from the ESV, that's the English Standard Version. Amen. And it says here that then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. If you have a Bible, I want you to underline that in your Bible. And I do encourage you to pull out your Bible, amen, as you are focused on the word of God today. It says here, then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. That's another thing I want you to underline in your Bible. The heavens were opened to him. And this, the Bible continues, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son, with whom I'm well pleased. And the last thing I want you to underline in your Bible is well pleased, well pleased, all right? And so we're going to look here at this passage as we, as we come together to, to, to dig into the Word of God and as we break the bread of life. And I believe that the Lord is going to speak to you in a powerful way today. But there's three things in this passage that I want to look at, all right? And the first thing is that the heavens were opened to him. The heavens were open to him. Today, my message to you is living under an open heaven. Living under an open heaven. And I'm just going to give you the other three things that we're going to be looking at in the scriptures today. Is that there was a response from the Father when the heavens opened. The response from the Father was that this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Okay, well pleased speaks to us today of being in the will of God. And the third thing we're going to look at in this passage is the thing that brought about this moment that opened the heavens over Jesus' life and ministry. And that was that he said, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And so today we see that in that particular passage, we see an, a, a really uh, 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 amazing 
concept that I want to pull out of the scriptures to you is that when Jesus showed up on this side of the Jordan River to John the Baptist, John recognized in Jesus' life that Jesus was greater than him. But Jesus, understanding the will of the Father and understanding, listen to this word, submission and obedience, that Jesus was willing to submit to John and be baptized. And that idea of, of sub mutual submission and obedience is very key because it speaks also to Jesus' maturity in the Spirit. As we get to the word of, as we get to my points today, I want to give you a few ideas that are going to preface what we're going to talk about. And that first thought is that your life of submission and obedience to the will of God opens the heavens and sustains the reality of the heavenlies in your life. When you are submitted to the will of God and obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit, not only does it open heaven to you, but it sustains what God is doing in your life. I also want to suggest to you today that it is God's will and intent for you to walk and live under an open heaven. However, most believers don't walk in what God has for them because of what exists between their two ears. We call that an unrenewed mind. So today I want to talk to you for a few moments about what an open heaven is. It's a concept that we find in Scripture and we see it clearly that it existed in Jesus' life before he stepped into his next season of ministry. See, there's a connection with an open heaven to the season that you enter into in your life. When we look at an open heaven, I want to give you a few of my definitions that an open heaven speaks to us of the reality of God's kingdom coming upon and flowing through a believer's life. When we look at the kingdom of heaven, we see that where the kingdom exists, the spirit of God is present. The Holy Spirit is present wherever the kingdom is present. And so we see in Jesus' life the Holy Spirit coming down from the Father and resting upon Jesus' life until he goes to the cross. And we see also that, this, that an open heaven speaks to us of a momentary experience in a particular season of life that can be sustained. Now I'm going to say that again. An open heaven also speaks to us of a momentary experience that, that can be sustained in our life. An open heaven is, what, is, is, is where what exists in heaven shows up on earth. Now, how many of you today listening to me want what's in heaven to be present on the earth in your life? I'm going to give you this last idea of how I would try to encapsulate what an open heaven is as we look through the scriptures. Is that an open heaven is when the face of God is turned toward you with no interference. When there's nothing blocking what heaven is sending to your life. Now let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. And we're going to continue to establish this idea of an open heaven so that we can do and, 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 and hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to us this morning. But Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 12, it says that the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven. Notice he said open the heaven, to give rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Now this is Deuteronomy chapter 8, 28, I'm sorry, and this is the passage of scripture that is the blessing of obedience. And we see here in this contextually that the open heavens are connected to our obedience. The Bible says rain in his season, that the rain, when the heavens open, the rain will come in his season. And the Bible also says that when the heavens are open over your life, I want you to get excited about this promise, that you'll be the lender and not the borrower. That it actually says that you will lend to nations. It's an economic blessing. And here, believer, it applies to a nation. Isn't that powerful? What that speaks to me today is that there can be an open heaven over a nation just as well as there can be an open heaven over your life. It says here that a nation can have an open heaven. 
Another thing we see about open heavens in Scripture is that the open heaven is connected to sacrificial offerings. In Leviticus 9 and 24, it says, Then there came a fire out of heaven from the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat. Fire from heaven, I want you to hear this, fire from heaven comes from God when he's pleased with the offering. You see, we can give any type of offering, but just any type of offering is not accepted by the Lord. But this speaks to us today that when we live our lives and give an acceptable offering that's pleasing to God, that it speaks to us of God's acceptance, blessing, and favor on our lives. Did you know that the Temple of Solomon was built upon two areas of property? I'm sorry, on a, upon an area of property where there was an open heaven because there was a sacrificial offering that was accepted by the Lord. How about this one, the tithe? We read this one all the time, and in Malachi chapter 3, it speaks of the tithe, and it says, Bring ye all the tithe, not some of it, into the storehouse, that there be, may be meat in my house. And the Bible says, And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven, open the windows of heaven, and pour out a blessing, pour out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Again, Malachi speaks to us of that blessing of obedience, and it is connected to an open heaven. Here's what I've learned about the tithe. The tithe shows God your heart for him, his servant, and his house. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord on that one. When you give the tithe, you are demonstrating to God that, God, I love not only you, but I love your servant and I love your house. In Ezekiel, we see an open heaven is associated with vision. In Jacob, we see in an open heaven where he had that experience where he laid his head upon a rock and the heavens were opened and there were angels, and angels ascending and descending upon the ladder. And we see in this story that an open heaven is connected with divine dreams and encounters from the Lord, that, that heaven and earth are connected. When you have an open heaven in your life, there's a connection between heaven and earth. Jacob had such an experience at the place that he called Bethel that he woke up and said, surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. And he called that place the house of God. There's a connection between the house of God and an open heaven. And I want to submit to you today that we can go on and on in the scriptures to talk about this concept, this idea of the heavens being open over your life. And what's so powerful for us to understand today is that not only is this a reality that God opens the heavens when he wants to get something from heaven to earth, but he wants to open the heavens over your life. I want you to accept that and receive this in your spirit. But as we see in the life of Jesus today, that it's not just that God opens the heavens. Because if God could do it once, that means that he could do it again. And if he can do it, how do I keep it? How do I walk in it? How do I live under that connection that's unhindered between heaven and earth without any interference in between? We see so many scriptures when we look in the life of Elijah and Elisha that during his time there were open heavens in different places. It's connected to land. We see the open heavens connected to certain geographical locations, and the sons of the prophets were, if, if I might say it this way, were sustaining an open heaven in a past season. I want to suggest to you today that God is challenging us to position ourselves to believe him for a new realm of glory and a new realm of blessing and favor that's going to come upon our lives and come upon the church as we position our hearts with, the, with believing and receiving the revelation of his word today. The, in, in, in Elijah's day, Elijah tested 
Elisha and told him to stay in different locations where there were open heavens. I'm giving you revelation here. The reason why he wanted him to stay in these locations, and those locations were Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho, and the Jordan. Very important. The reason why he wanted them to, he wanted to test him because he wanted to see, can I bring you to another church so you can experience their open heaven? Or will you be loyal and faithful to stick with your father and to see what God is about to do? And so we see in Elisha's life, Elisha didn't stay just because of the experience. But it wasn't the experience that Elisha was chasing after. It was the will of God that he was chasing after. Because Elisha knew that the will of God sustains what God is doing. So many other places we could talk about it. But I want to give you a point here. My first point this morning is that our battle is for the will of God. We're going to talk a few moments about the will of God because I just wanted to establish this concept of the open heavens. But we're going to talk about the will of God because that's what sustains it. And that's what brings it about. Our battle is for the will of God. See, Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew chapter 6, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus taught us to pray, Lord, we want here on the earth what exists in heaven. How many of you know that what exists in heaven is no lack? How many of you know that what exists in heaven is healing and health and wholeness and blessing and favor? How many of you know that in heaven there's no oppression? So when we understand what we're fighting for, we have to get it in our spirit this morning that we're fighting for the will of God to take place in our lives, in our church, and in our nation. I want you to get that in your spirit today. We're fighting for the will of God. You see, in our lives, oftentimes, we can be walking in the will of God, but we're not aware of the blockage or the warfare that exists in between us and the heavens. And so sometimes in your life, you can be saying, hey, Lord, I'm doing what I know to do, but why isn't this showing up? And I'm here to tell you today that you just need to continue to press on and to continue to pursue the will of God for your life. Because in doing so, you're going to break open the heavens, that, the, that, that that thing that's blocking God's provision and God's reality from showing up in your life will be removed in Jesus' name. Our battle is for the will of God. Bishop has admonished us with a prayer challenge. And I want to echo that and challenge you that we must be a people of prayer. We must continue in prayer. That as we do that, we are opening the heavens. We are fighting a spiritual war that is winning and prevailing. Listen, you are powerful when you're on your knees. You're most powerful when you're on your knees. But when I'm on my knees, I'm not just praying, God, bless me. I'm saying, God, let your kingdom come and your will be done here on the earth just as it is in heaven. My second point today is that the will of God is the key to your life. Now, if you said, hey, pastor, if you could give me one key that would help me in my walk with the Lord, I would tell you today that the will of God is the key to your life. What is the will of God? Let's turn to Romans chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 1 through verse 2. What is the will of God? Many people will say many things about what the will of God is, and I would simplify it to say it is that thing, that place, that thing that you can do that is the most pleasing to the Father. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, look at this, a living sacrifice, there's that sacrifice again, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, pay attention, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
that if I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind, I can prove what is the will of God. Now, I've noticed that God is sovereign. He's perfect, and he doesn't make a mistake. He has one will, and oftentimes we divide it into three. But I would like to suggest to you this morning that the will of God does have dimensions to it, that there are three dimensions that I would like to express to you today of the will of God. And oftentimes we either find ourselves in varying degrees of the the will of God, and sometimes we find ourselves out of the will of God. But those three dimensions, number one, it's the revealed will. This is what's written. This is what's easily known. This is what is is in Scripture. The gospel, the Bible says, is revealed to us that it is God's will to save. The will of God is is written in Scripture. Listen, you can read the Bible and know what God wants for your life. The revealed will of God. The Bible even talks about how it's revealed that judgment is coming upon the ungodly and the sinner. We don't want to talk about this, but it's revealed in Scripture. And so we see the revealed will of God. And listen what happens. The revealed will of God is when you are doing what you're just supposed to be doing. It's not anything special. You see, reading the Word every day is what we're supposed to be doing because we got to let the Word work in us. But when we don't allow the Word work to work in us, we can't find ourselves moving into His perfect will. We're going to get there. Romans tells us that we walk in faith and grace is released to us. The second idea of the will of God, helping you to understand it, is that there's a mysterious aspect to the will of God. This is the mystery. It's that which is spoken and discerned. You can't know it from reading the book. It's when the Spirit of God speaks to you and gives you direction. For me, I was 18 years old and in college playing basketball on a, on a scholarship And one day as I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, what I knew to do, I was in my prayer closet. And the Lord spoke to me and said, don't go back to Florida. Stay and pursue the ministry. How many of you know that I've been following that word since he gave it to me? And I've had to fight Different distractions to stop me from obeying what he revealed to me through a mystery. What about Jonah? Jonah heard the mysterious will of God when God said to Jonah, Jonah, go to Nineveh. But here's what happened with Jonah. Jonah went to Nineveh, but his heart didn't go. So then I bring you to the third place, which is the perfect will. When we walk in the perfect will of God, the word perfect means to be mature. It is God saying that his will for you today is for you to grow up in the things of the Spirit. It's for you to walk in a greater level of maturity. For me, I've seen this happen again with another example of the Bible college. Oftentimes when I've realized that God will sometimes give you options so that you can choose. And I was sitting over here in our church one day, and I had done the two years of the Bible college. And I know that my time for that was up. And the Lord said, you can go again if you want to. He was saying to me that I'll be pleased with you whether or not you do it. But there was a decision that I was given to make to see whether or not my heart was in what he was telling me to do. And oftentimes we find ourselves hearing what God has told us, but our heart not being in it. I call it carrying your cross. I call it when your heart lines up with his heart. This is where we see Jesus coming into the Jordan. And his heart of submission is evident in his willingness to lay down his life for John 
to baptize him. And it's funny how they're arguing, not arguing, but they're kind of wrestling with each other. No, you need to baptize me. No, I need to be baptized by you. When I've, what I've understand about a heart of submission is that you don't bring any more fight into the picture with God. That God, I'm not fighting against you anymore. God, I'm surrendered to you. That's that place that God wants to bring us to today, that it's a place where we begin to mature in the discernment of what he wants us to do. It's not just that I heard it, but okay, Lord, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Number three, why is this so important? Because your decisions determine your outcomes. I'm going to say it again a different way. Your decisions determine your destiny. What you do today determines your tomorrow. When you learn to carry your cross daily, whatever you have to do, listen, this is what the cross is. Whatever you have to do to keep Christ first in your life and keep your love on for your brother, that's your cross. It's whatever you got to do to keep Jesus first in your life. And keep love toward your brother. Carry your cross. I want to challenge you today in these uncertain times that when we make those difficult decisions that might seem difficult, listen, you're positioning yourself. Where I'm going today and the decisions I make today and the decisions I make tomorrow, I want to be mindful of what the Holy Spirit is saying to me, but I don't want resistant to what the Spirit of God is saying to me. I want to be mindful of what's on the Father's heart today. Because what I've realized is that when I'm mindful of what's in the Father's heart, hell can't resist me. When I've got my mind set on the will of God. It doesn't matter what comes against you. Listen, breakthrough is inevitable when your life and your heart is set on the will of God. And I get it. I understand today that you say, well, you know what, Pastor, this is a hard word. Well, well, Bishop said that the word of God is like medicine. And how many of you like to take your medicine? But I can encourage you today that if this word would get in your spirit, that it will bring you from where you are to where you're supposed to be. How many of you today want to go from where you are to where you're supposed to be? Listen, I'm telling you today that we're moving somewhere. You say, well, we're in this COVID-19 and we're shut down, but I feel like I'm staying still. But I'm telling you that when you are submitted to the will of God, you're moving somewhere. We're not idle. We're fighting. We're moving. I want you to get it today. But you say today, Pastor, I've missed it. I know that where I am is not where I'm supposed to be. And I've battled condemnation and I've battled all kinds of judgment in my own mind. And I've battled all kinds of things that cause me to not want to step up to the plate. And I want to just give you this last point that should encourage you. It's that God doesn't despise a broken and contrite heart. God will never despise a broken and contrite heart. Psalm 51 and 17 tells us that. But you say, well, what does it mean to despise? The word despise means to make light of. It means to hold in contempt. Listen, when you come to the Lord with brokenness, with contrition, with repentance, God doesn't look away from that. See, we talked about the heavens being open. It's that God's face is turned towards you with no interference. And I'm here to tell you today that when we continue to walk before the Lord humbly, when we walk before the Lord with contrition, God's face is turned towards you. And when his face is turned towards you, his blessing shows up in your life. His favor shows up in your life. He doesn't despise it. He doesn't look away from it. He loves it. You know, there are certain things that, that God loves, 
And David understood this because when David read this or wrote this psalm in Psalm 51 was at a moment in his life where he had blown it. This was written after the king didn't step into the battle where he was supposed to be. And because he didn't step into the battle where he was supposed to be, he found himself battling temptation. And the temptation of that time was a pretty lady named Bathsheba, who one day, we don't know if it was evening or morning, that she was taking a bath on a veranda. Please don't take a shower outside. Do it for yourself and do it for those who might be walking by. But David, this day was tempted beyond measure and fell. And the Bible says that because of David's mistake, that he gave the enemies of God a cause for reproach. That means shame. But that decision that he made caused David's heart to be broken. And he said these words. Let's read it. Psalms 51, verse 17, as we close. He says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Verse 18 says, do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you shall be pleased. Listen to that. Pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness. There it is again. With burnt offering and whole burnt offering, then they will offer bulls on your altar. Listen, God is not pleased with the works of the flesh. He's pleased only with the contrite heart. A heart that says, God, you are God and I am not. Jesus, you are Lord and I submit to you. God, I surrender to you. That heart of brokenness that David experienced those many years ago. But here today, I want to say to you, wherever you are in your living room, or as I've said earlier, maybe you're in your car, that the Spirit of God is prodding your heart this morning. I know, I can sense it. That right where you are, you sense the very presence of God coming into your room. That he's speaking to you and compelling you with a gentle nod, with a loving prod. The Bible calls that conviction. It's not condemnation. You see, when the Spirit of God speaks to you, he doesn't condemn you. When the Spirit of God comes, he speaks with that quiet and gentle voice that says to you lovingly, I've called you to myself. You know what I've called you to do. And I want to challenge you today. I want to encourage you today to, to listen to that voice and to respond to that loving voice. You see, when Jesus went to the cross, did you know that he was despised so that you could be accepted? For those of you this morning, that are battling and wrestling with getting to where you're supposed to be. You say, well, I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. Listen, it starts in the heart. But for those of you that are wrestling with, God, I know I've got a decision to make. Listen, that when we come and we submit ourselves and we humble ourselves before an almighty God, that he gives us grace to do what he's called us to do. As we are in this place, I want to read this scripture in Isaiah 53. It says, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one whom men hid their faces, he was despised. And we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But listen to this, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought, his pe that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. Listen to me today, that as your heart begins to respond to the Spirit of God, everything that heaven has for you is being released into your life today. 
The very joy of the kingdom of God is being released into your house right now. The very peace of God is flowing into your living room right now. The very grace of God, listen at your response, the grace of God is moving. As we come, as we approach and we draw near with our heart of humility, our heart of saying, God, in this moment and in this time, in our season of life, God, we need you more than we need everything. We need you more than we need anything. As you begin to respond in your heart, the Spirit of God is needing you. Father, I thank you today. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for those that are listening under the sound of my voice, those that you have called, those that you are beckoning. Holy Spirit, that you would draw hearts to the cross today, that you would encourage the believer today to know that there is nothing that you have need of that is missing in heaven. And God has made heaven available to you today, believer. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Father, as we come boldly before your throne of grace, we thank you that you've opened heaven to those who are humble, to those who are meek. For you even said that the meek shall inherit the earth. And so, Father, I want to declare over your people, God, that as we are positioning ourselves and as we are lining our lives up with what you're saying to us in this moment, that you're moving us into a divine season of encounter, that you're moving us into a divine season of blessing, that you're moving us into a divine season of favor. So, Father, I thank you today. I thank you today for those that are hearing me, that are saying, I hear what you're saying, Lord, and I want it. That's where it begins. It begins with you saying, God, I want what you have for me. God, I'm desperate because that's what a broken heart is. I'm broken, God. I don't want life the way that it was. I don't want to continue on in the things that used to be. I don't want to live in yesterday's glory. God, I want your fresh fire in my life. God, I want the Spirit of God to fall fresh in my living room. God, I want you to fall fresh upon my life and upon my church that we would be a people set apart, a city set upon on a hill that all nations would flow into it. God, that we would be a place where all nations would flow into the house of God. Oh, we thank you today, Lord. We thank you today, Holy Spirit. Come on, right where you are, come on, just thank him. When you thank him, when you say, Lord, I thank you, you're welcoming him. Come on, just welcome him right where you are. If you're sick in your body, as you welcome him, just receive your healing. You may have been afflicted with even the virus, but we curse COVID-19 right now. We declare over those who are sick in their body, be healed in Jesus' name. For those of you who have been tormented, we declare be free in Jesus' name. May the peace of God rest upon your spirit and your soul. Father, we thank you today that we have an unction and we have a decree that the kingdom of God has come. And Father, even as you are ushering us into a new season, Father, we declare the kingdom to be established in our lives. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. And there are those that are hearing me today. You say, I am compelled by the word today, but I am not where I ought to be with God. I want you to pray with me. 
Today is a day of salvation for you. Listen, God loves you. Jesus did everything he had to. He, 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 he received the penalty of your sin so that you could walk in his righteousness. Listen, by accepting Christ today, you can experience such a life transformation that your life will literally never be the same after this moment in time. I want you to pray and repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe today that you are the Son of God and that you died on the cross for my sins. Today, Lord, I give you my life. I surrender my will to you. I ask you, Lord, to have your way. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, if you prayed that prayer, won't you type in the comments this morning that I prayed that prayer and someone would love to connect with you and help you to see how you can walk the life that God intended for you. Listen, God has such great things in store for us today. Be encouraged, be excited as we embrace what God is saying us to us and be full of faith today as God is on the throne and may the heavens be open over your life. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you. Hey, thanks for watching the City Church YouTube channel. If you've enjoyed this message, take a moment and click the subscribe button. That way you won't miss another message. If you've been blessed in any way by this ministry and you want to partner with us in taking the gospel of Jesus Christ around the globe, you can click the link in the description below to give now. Again, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.